you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our High Priest and the Shepherd of our souls. This is Dr. Bertha Sewa Bonsuai bringing you a word of inspiration. This morning I am continuing my joy series and this morning's message is entitled, You Are Blessed. Rejoice. My text is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And I read, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous and with favor. Will thou compass him as with a shield? It is my hope that by the end of this message, you will put your trust in God. You will choose to position yourself in a place of righteousness and that you will understand what it means to be blessed. Let all who put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. It means wake up in the morning and let out a shout, a shout of pure joy. Because you know that God is your defense. You know, as it says in verse 12, that God is about to bless you. And he will compass your life with favor as with a shield. Yesterday I started talking to you about joy. I defined joy as a sense of inner peace and excitement that comes from knowing that God is with you now and always, and that you have committed the future into his hands so you can walk in rest. I mentioned that joy is a fruit of the spirit, but I also noted that you can consciously choose to be joyful when you understand the depth of love that God has for you. And once you understand that love, you begin to become exceedingly glad just like receiving news from a far country. This morning, I want to give you another reason to rejoice and shout for joy. In Psalm 5, the psalmist says, that let all who put their trust in him rejoice and shout for joy. And he gives us three reasons in the, the scripture that I just read. It says, because God defends us. Next, it says, because the Lord will bless, bless the righteous. And then it says, God is going to compass you about with favor. Yesterday, I talked about Psalm 103, about the goodness of God in delivering us and defending us. And that is all part of our defense system that God has for us. Defense is extremely important in any organization because at any one time, somebody wants what you have. Every country has a department of defense and a defense budget to support the army and buy the necessary materials for warfare to protect their people against enemy attacks. The United States has a large defense budget that goes into millions of dollars and billions of dollars. But for the child of God, God is your defense. The psalmist tells you to shout for joy because God defends you. Yesterday I talked about the immune system as a major defense against diseases. However, God is our spiritual defense against the terror by night and the arrow that flies by day, as is noted in Psalm 91. Bible says, For thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous. This morning rejoice because you are blessed. And the Lord is about to bless you even mightily, mightier than you've ever known, mightier than you've ever, ever considered. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, Verse 22, oh, it says, and the blessings of God. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. It maketh rich. In your room, just say, the blessings of God, it maketh rich. So what is this blessing that maketh a man rich and for which we should rejoice and be glad? A blessing, in my definition, 
is a spiritual state characterized by God's divine favor so that everything the individual does becomes successful and prosperous. A blessing is a spiritual state. In most cultures, people quickly understand curses more than blessing because when somebody is cursed, there is a spiritual ordination in the realm of the spirit for them to fail and that nothing they do becomes successful. However, when someone is blessed, the hand of God rests upon such an individual and everything they touch becomes a blessing. It does not mean that they will not have enemies, but rather when they do, no weapon that the enemy has fashioned against them will prosper. In one of Aesop's fables, we learn about Midas, a man who wished that everything he touched would turn into gold. Yes, in fact, everything he touched did turn into gold, in so much that even when he touched his own daughter, she turned into gold. This made him extremely sad. He had a spiritual inclination to get wealth, but that wealth brought sorrow with it. But this morning, I'm talking about the blessings of God that maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. And I want to emphasize this point that the blessing is not riches, capital N-O-T. The blessing is not riches. For example, you can have a very meek man who is blessed and may not be extremely wealthy. It does not mean that they are not blessed. However, the blessing maketh rich. The blessing is not riches, but the blessing maketh rich. The blessing maketh. The blessing maketh. The blessing is a full package and riches are just part of it. Blessings affect your spirit, soul, and your body. In fact, when you are blessed, it is your spirit that is blessed. I want you to get this concept. When you are blessed, it is your spirit man that is blessed. This then affects your body so that you walk in health. God heals you every day as I shared with you yesterday, and you always look young. The blessing affects your relationships, it affects your work, and because you are blessed, it begins to affect your business transactions, which then creates wealth. Yes, for thou, O God, will bless the righteous. Now the blessing maketh rich. If you do not understand this concept, that it is your spirit man that is blessed, then on the days that you don't have money, you will think you are not blessed. Wealth is only part of the package. And I will read this in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I know there are several people who doubt the blessing. And they always speak against the men of God and say, Oh, they are only after money and they are preaching prosperity. And now you have prosperity preachers. Please, let me make a very po good point of correction. We don't have prosperity preachers. We have blessing preachers. People who preach and let you know that God can bless you. And when God begins to bless you, he may give you wealth. But people who are preaching about prosperity. And today I stand in support of every man of God who preaches about blessing. Because it is the blessing that will create wealth. But the blessing is not equal to wealth. So if you're out there and you're one of those who keep saying, Oh, and the preachers these days, all oh, they talk about is money. No, they're not talking about money. They're talking about the blessing. The blessing is not necessarily wealth. You can be blessed in so many ways. Wealth is just a byproduct. And I'll be sharing with you about Job. And you will understand this concept that preachers are talking about the blessing. And that there is nothing like a prosperity preacher. There are the, the blessing preachers. Men that God, men and women that God has chosen to tell you that you are blessed. Let me read with you in chapter Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all of the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Remember, the blessings will come if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. If you observe to do all of his commandments, this is the prerequisite for the blessing. And this is what people have described as the so-called prosperity preachers. This is what they've been talking about. 
if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all of the nations of the earth, and all of these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. And now I read the blessings. Deuteronomy 28 verse 3. It says, Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. It means your children will be blessed, the fruit of your body. Verse 5. Blessed shall be, verse 5. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. Your household will be blessed. Verse 6. Blessed shall that be when you come in, and blessed shall that be when you go out. It means your movements will be blessed. Verse 7, the Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They will come out against thee in one way and flee before thee in seven ways. People, your enemies shall fall before you when they try to attack you. So their best position for all your enemies is to just keep quiet and watch you stay blessed. If they try to rise up against you, the Bible says that because of the blessing, they, they will flee before you. They'll be smitten. Verse 8, the Lord shall command thy, the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand to do. And he shall bless you in the land with the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish you and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If only you will keep his commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of your ground, the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give thee. It means that even your plants will be blessed. Everything you do will be blessed. If there are animals in your house, those animals will be blessed. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. You will go into your closet and you will look and see that you have a lot. You have a lot of clothes. You have a lot of things. Not because you chose them, but there is a blessing upon your life. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Verse 12, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain, oh hallelujah, the rain to your thy land in his season, and to bless all of the work of your, of, your, of your hand, and you shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow, and the Lord shall make you to be the head and not the tail, you shall be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou wilt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command you this day, to observe and to do them. Oh, hallelujah. The prerequisite for the blessing is obedience to God. Obedience to God and observing his commandments and doing them. Obedience to God and observing his commandments. Now, I want us to look at a case in context. It's the story of Job. Turn with me to the book of Job chapter 1. I want you to understand this, that it is the blessing that maketh. And that riches is not equal to blessing. And that if somebody tells you God has blessed you, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It is the Lord. And you can rejoice and shout for joy. Bible says that for thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous. Hallelujah. With favor will ye surround you as with a shield. Job was an example of a blessed man. Turn with me to the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, And there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born to him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was also 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. If there was going to be a Forbes book of the wealthy in their time, he would come up to be one of the richest men at that time. He would make the Forbes 100 list of the most wealthy men in the world. Job was a rich man. Now note something. It says that he feared God and eschewed evil. He was a perfect and upright man. Most of the time we talk about the story of Job and we talk about how he was sick in his body and he lost everything. But most people miss Job chapter 1, verse 1. 
He was a perfect and an upright man. And one, one that feared God. There are some people who fear God. They say that in their mouth they fear God. But they go and choose evil. But Job, the Bible says he eschewed evil. Once he found out that any procedure or process he was doing was evil, he moved away from it. In fact, somewhere he says he'd even made a covenant with his eyes. He's even agreed with his eyes that he would not even look at a woman with lust. Some, some of you, you've decided you will watch pornography. Every day you are watching pornography. You are not eschewing evil. You have not made a covenant with your eyes to eschew anything that is not godly. God hates it. The Bible says he had 10 children, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen. Each of the seven days of the week, one son will have a party. So Monday, son one, Tuesday, son two. Th Every day there was a party. And the three sisters didn't have to organize parties. The Bible says they just invited them to eat and drink with them. And after the parties, Job will offer burnt offerings to God. Just in case, he said, maybe the children had sinned in their hearts and cursed God. And the devil decided to attack Job. The Bible says that on the day when the sons of God came to repre represent themselves before the Lord, Satan sneaked in there. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From walking to and fro over the earth, and walking up and down in it, which is what he does. And the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him in earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. God was boasting about Job. And look at what Job said. Verse 9, Job chapter 1, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about everything that he has? You bless the work of his hands and his substance increase in the land. In other words, the devil was admitting the fact that because of God's protection and God's blessing, he could not touch Job. It means that for those of you who haven't been attacked by the devil, you are being kept by the power of God. Satan said, put your hand forth and touch everything and he will curse you to your face. But you know, I want you to make a note of Job chapter 1 verse 10. The devil admitted that, Has thou not blessed the work of his hands? Even the devil understands the blessing. So this morning, I want you to get the blessing. But you know where the devil went wrong? He did not understand that the blessing was upon the spirit of a man and not on his things. He thought, like a lot of people, that the more things you have, the more blessed you are, and that the blessing was on the things. No, it is the spirit of a man that is blessed. The Bible says, and God granted him rights and said, destroy everything that he has. And let's see what happens. And so in Job chapter 2, in chapter 1, the devil started his attack. He attacked his servants, killed them all in one day, attacked his children, killed them all in one day. Mm. Job arose and rent his mantle. He fell down on the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible says in all this, Job did not charge God foolishly. So the devil's plan did not work. Hmm. So the devil went back and said, Okay, has you, Satan, God asked Satan again, where have you been? He said, from going to and fro by the earth. And the Lord said, have you considered Job? You've taken away everything he has, but he's still walking fast in his integrity. Although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause. And the devil said, mm, skin for skin, a man will give anything for his life. Touch his bone and flesh and see, he will curse you. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. Now remember these four words. Job chapter 2, verse 6. It says, save his life. Because 
God knew that the blessing is upon the life. So if Job's life is preserved, everything the devil is doing, God can, is, is destroying, God can restore. The Bible says that for the devil, Jesus himself said, it says the enemy, de the devil, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I have come. Jesus has come that your life will be blessed and you have everything in abundance. But the devil comes to steal. So let's watch what he did. He proceeded to touch Job's body. Job chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says, And so, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and he smote Job. He smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. Believe me, I'm an infectious disease specialist. When your body is smote with boils from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head, you are sick. This morning, you may not have Job's story, but maybe you've been walking in integrity, eschewing evil, fearing God. And sometimes it feels like all is lost. Some business transactions are not going well. Your children are dying, etc. Sometimes it's actually your uprightness that is drawing the afflictions. The word of God says in Psalm 34 verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Verse 20, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. So long as you have life, the blessing is on you. You are still blessed and you will recover all that you've lost. Your situation is temporary. Your situation is temporary. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. I want you to know this. You are blessed. The devil may touch you. But remember those four words. God says, but save his life. So long as you have life, everything you've lost, you will regain. His wife began, Job's wife began to tell him, curse God and die. His friends sat down to analyze his calamity. Sometimes when you get into trouble, people sit down to deliberate and they begin to wonder, what did you do wrong? Man of God, woman of God, you know in your hearts that you've been upright. Stay the course. I want to strengthen you this morning. The Bible says that in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. In his trouble, Job began to praise God. He rebuked his friends and, and, and said to them, You don't know the God that I serve. God cannot do this to me. The Bible says that he did not sin with his lips. Now fast forward with me to chapter 44. He began to deliberate with God, Job chapter 2, verse 42, Job, Job chapter 42. He says, who is, he was telling God, I, I know that you can do everything and that nothing can be withheld from thee. I would demand of thee and declare unto you, wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Job was talking to God. Finally, in Job chapter 42, verse 10. God rebuked Job's friends who had been taunting him and telling him that maybe he did something wrong. He asked them to go and offer sacrifices unto Job and pray and ask Job to pray for, him, for them. Job 42 verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody's captivity is about to be turned around. You have been in a situation and it looks like a, a, the wheel is spinning and spinning and you are dizzy. But God is about to turn your captivity. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Verse 12, the Lord blessed him in his latter end more than his beginning. Oh, your latter end will be blessed. Now he had 14,000 sheep. He went from 7,000 sheep to 14,000 sheep. He went from 3,000 camels to 6,000 camels. He went from 500 yoke of oxen to 1,000 yoke of oxen. He went from 500 asses to 1,000 asses. And guess what? He had seven more sons and three daughters. And the Bible says that her daughters were more beautiful than before. In all the land, there was not found more beautiful women than the daughters of Job. And Job lived to be 140 years old. 
and saw his sons, and his sons' sons, even to four generations. And Job died, being full of days and being old. Oh, the blessings of God, it maketh rich rejoice. And I want to emphasize again, riches is not equal to the blessing. Otherwise, when the devil took everything from Job and he made his body sick, one would have thought his blessing was gone. But because the blessing resides in your spirit, God said, save his life. The blessings is in your life. Once you're alive, God can restore all that you've lost. Rejoice. Today, I have a word for somebody who is experiencing difficulties in their life. Who is experiencing dryness. Several areas of your life where you feel you are sick. And everything is dry. I want you to know that God is about to send rain. Let me read one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Joel chapter 2 verse 21 to 27. It says, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bring it, beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore unto you the years, the years, the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and you will eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed, and you will eat in plenty and be satisfied, and you will know that I'm in the midst of Israel, that I'm the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. God is about to restore to you. God is about to send rain. And show me who has ever been able to stop rain. When God begins to rain on you, you cannot stop the rain. And nobody can stop it. The blessings of God, it maketh rich. The Bible says in Genesis 24, 25 of Abraham. Abraham's servant was saying, And the Lord has blessed my master greatly. And he's become great and has given him flocks and heads of sheep and silver, and gold, and men servants, and maid servants, and camels, and asses. Abraham was blessed. Isaac was blessed. In Genesis 26, verse 12, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in the land, and received in that same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, and went forward, and grew, until he had become very great. Today, I think of living examples like Reverend Dr. Mensa Anamwa Otabil, Senior Pastor and General Overseer of International Central Gospel Church, headquartered in Accra. He's one of the many examples of people who has been blessed. I'm not saying he's the only one who is blessed. Many, many people have been blessed. I will talk about the conditions of blessing in a moment, but I'm just using him as an example. God has prospered him. His church has grown larger and larger and larger. His children are walking in the Lord. His eldest daughter has become a doctor. His vision of building a university has come to pass. And he's not diminishing. He's waxing greater and greater and greater. Just like was said of Isaac. This year, 2015, he was named the most influential man in Ghana. Above politicians, musicians, the rich and famous. Oh, the blessings. You would think a man of God who speaks the word, if we're going to talk about influence, he may not be above. Yeah, they'll be looking for rich people. But yes, when the blessing is upon you, it does not bring any sorrow. For you to understand how the blessings work, let me quickly take you to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. The Bible says that, and when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply thee exceedingly. I will multiply thee exceedingly. Which is what God has done with Reverend Dr. Mensah Otterville. Walk before me and be thou perfect. The secret to the blessing 
is to walk before me. Walk before God and be perfect. This morning, I want to challenge you. Walk before God and be perfect. Examine your life. If you're engaged in any form of sin that makes you imperfect, God wants you to experience his blessing. Walk before God and be perfect. If you're engaged in adultery, idol worship, witchcraft, lies, stealing, pornography, prostitution, drugs, any unholy transaction, God is calling you to come out and be holy so you can experience the blessings of God and walk in joy. Sometimes you'll see some people walking in sin, but they are still amassing wealth and prospering by worldly standards and everybody's taking pictures of them. They are in Hollywood and so forth. This morning, I tell you that wealth is not equal to blessing. However, the blessing can make you rich. Seek blessing. David talks about people who are sinning and compromising before God, but seem to be blessed. But he says something in Psalm, Psalm 37, verse 37. He says, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. What really determines whether you are blessed or not is your end. Look at Job. His end was peace. He went through some hard times, but the man's end was peace. In Psalm 73, David begins to talk about, he says, truly God is good unto Israel. But as for him, his feet were almost gone, for he was envious at the foolish. He saw the prosperity of the wicked. As Psalm 73 verse 4, it says, There were no bands in their death, their strength was firm, they were not in trouble, pride was compassing them about, they were walking in violence, their eyes turned out with fatness, they have more than hearts could wish, they were corrupt. They were walking in sin, but they seemed to be prospering. They were speaking wickedly concerning oppression, setting their mouth against the heavens. I don't believe in God. God doesn't exist. Their tongue was walking through the earth. Hey, verse 11, it says, and how does God know? Behold, these are the ungodly. Psalm 73 verse 12. These are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. He said, verily, I've cleansed my heart in vain. I've washed my hands in innocency. For all day I've been plagued and chasing every morning. Ah, verse 16, he says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Oh, then we come to verse 17. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Oh, surely you've set them in slippery places. You've cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Oh, the blessing is make it rich. I tell you, the end, he says, until I saw their end. If you are not an upright man, I want you to know this morning, Jesus is there for you. Colossians 1 verse 13 tells us that God who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God. This morning, the blood of Jesus, the Bible says that we have redemption through his blood. God can forgive you of your past and translate you into his kingdom. Accept him today, wherever you are. Ask God, to, Jesus, to come into your heart. Read about him in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or... Go online to kingjamesbible.com and start reading about Jesus. Join a church or, or a fellowship and experience the joy of the Lord. This morning, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. This morning, I talked about rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice because God is about to bless you. This has been Dr. Bertha Ayi bringing you the message, you are blessed. Rejoice. Let me know what God is doing in your life. Email me at sewabb at berthaayi.com or follow me on Twitter at Adwa Sewa, A-D-W-O-A, S-E-R-W-A, and have a wonderful day. God richly bless you. Everything